live from Plant Lab in Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. This is Stacker News Live. Hello, this is Joe. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Stacker News Live. My name's Car. I'm with Keon. How's it going, Keon? Hello. How was um, your uh, Thanksgiving? It was. Uh, it was great. I came into the lab. Even on Thanksgiving? Uh, yes, I did. Oh wow! Yeah. Anybody else show up? Was it just uh, you and Stacks or what? Me, Stacks, uh, and some of the Opaki team. Oh, nice. nice. Yes. Yeah. I heard we had a visitor from Germany or something. I was like a. I think that was a few Where'd days ago. Oh, wow. Maybe that was Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday. That's incredible. Or Monday. But yeah, it was interesting. He brought like four, three children, three young children with him. Really? Into the lab? Yeah. Wow. And he was wearing like a Bitcoiner shirt. He's wearing the Bitcoiner, he was wearing, or a Bitcoiner sweater from the German, it was like a popular German Bitcoin podcast or group. Mm. I don't, I mean, I'm not German, so I don't know. It's called like, I don't know how to do German. Oh, I have, I have a couple stickers. Yeah. Them. Is that where they, okay. Probably that. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool having him in here. He's really That's nice awesome. guy. Yeah. Love to see it. How was your, how was your It was things? good. I had had a good time. Made a turkey, you know, busy my family. It was fun. You um, made a turkey? Yeah, I made a turkey. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know you're a turkey man. Hey. Get I thought you, you just gotta, did gotta, ham. You got to step outside <laughs> your, uh, your comfort zone. Man. It looked like a good turkey. Yeah, it looked it came, like I shared it with the stackers on, on the saloon. But um, yeah, I just did a little bit of that. I watched a lot of documentaries. Really cool stuff. Which ones? Just like, just binging on stupid Netflix documentaries. Stuff about the Third Reich and all that kind of stuff. The Third Reich. It was pretty good, dude. It was like really good. What was the Second Reich? You know? uh, what about those guys? Dude, dude. I, went deep. I went deep. Like one evening, I the went earlier deep. Reichs. Um, but no, it's some good stuff, dude. A lot of similarities. A lot of similarities um, with the world today. Between the Third Reich and the world today? Well, just like like everything that was going on with Weimar, because it covers everything. It like covers the gamut from like the, the right after World War One into you know the end of World War Two. Basically, um, it's a great document. I need to find it, but it's uh, it's good. Anyway, Sagers didn't come here for that. They came here for That's us right. to cover. They the don't, Car hates talking about history on the podcast. I think you guys can't handle it. Maybe, maybe they want. Let me know. Put it in this. <laughs> put it in Stacker News. Talk, see if you want to hear about more about the Third Reich. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not a good topic. Anyways, um, this is uh, Stacker.News. We cover uh, cover all the top stories on Stacker.News every week, uh, Monday through Friday. Is this, yeah, I guess this is the top stories from last Friday up until now. Like, how does that work? Yeah, yeah. It's like the last seven days hmm. starting from when we're looking at this backwards. Yeah. Surprisingly, there's, there's so many big stories this past week. Uh, that some of the ones didn't get covered in the top five. So I think we're going to talk about those at the end. But well, you uh, have like 10 top stories. That I, I did pick a lot because there's a lot of crazy stuff that happened this week, man. It was, it was hard to like, you know, switch from like watching this Netflix crazy documentary to looking online. But anyways, we're going we're gonna to cover it now. The first top story of the week is Uruguay, the new land of the free. This is from David W. November 23rd. 71 comments, 208 thousand sats i did read this one did you yeah cool well what do you got to say what is, what is this about car this, this is, is what you say to me <laughs> every time. <you> get <laughs> no this is where david like i guess he moved from uh was it paris or something he moved from france over to uk uk he moved from uk over to uruguay uruguay same, so roughly the same uh, yeah. and uh he kind of breaks down like everything, if you can see here, he breaks down geopolitics, national debt, banking, tax benefits, food and culture, lifestyle. Like he goes through the whole gamut. Um, and I thought he did a really good job. There was some of the stuff where I was like, do I really need to know that? Um, but other than that, other than that, it was pretty interesting. I think the most interesting was the residency part, which I thought was really, um, so I could scroll down. A lot of snackers were complaining about the, the, the amount of scrolling down that we have to do. I know we need to do like a view more thing or something. Here it goes right here. Yeah. So he goes into like res the residency stuff. So this is the most important thing whenever you're looking at becoming an expat. Uh, residency for individuals. Anyone with a monthly income of 1500 can apply and qualify for temporary residence. Uh, residence for a family. Uh, if you're a family of four, the main applicant having an income of 2000 is permissible. It's advisable. Um, citizenship. So after obtaining residency, you can become a citizen in just three years, which is interesting. And then, um, yeah, he goes into all that kind of stuff. What did you think about it? Oh, I thought it was great. Uh, I've been, uh, so this originally came up because a few weeks ago, Elvis Mercury created a post 
calling me out where he was, where him and I, he's not really calling me out, but we, him and I got into a discussion on one of the book club threads and he asked something about what would happen if the United States started confiscating Bitcoin. And I said, mm. uh, many, I think many people would leave. The world's a lot different now. I think that I think they leave. And so he started a thread where he's like, where, where would Bitcoiners go if they're going to leave? And my initial, my response was, uh, you're a why. Cause I had this conversation with my wife who, uh, who knows a lot about studied international relations and knows a lot about the rest of the world in a way that I don't. And she, she landed on your why too. So I was like, you're a why. And I listed off the reasons that she cited. And then, uh, David came in that thread and said, I've recently moved to your why. Wow. And, uh, and then, so you know, several of us were like, please share your experience. And so this is the results of that. Um, I was, you know, I really, so I really enjoyed it. I went through the whole thing. Uh, I was surprised to hear there's quite a bit, there's quite a bit in there. I was surprised to hear. So they're like, I think they're completely, uh, green on energy. So they're completely like renewable based. Uh, apparently they don't have any, they have to import all of their oil. Um, so that's like, you know, a thing. And then also I was surprised, I, I kind of knew some of the renewable stuff, but I didn't know to the extent of it. And then I was also surprised to hear that much of the goods in Uruguay are much more expensive than elsewhere. Yeah. He mentioned the computers, right? Like, yeah. and even vehicles, computers, vehicles, I think even food, especially when com it might, it might be comparable to Europe or something. He said, but basically compared to the surrounding countries, it's it's much more expensive. Wow, look at that. Like two to three times more expensive. Um, but uh, cool. He goes He goes through around, uh, he goes through some of the, you're scrolling through some of the uh, like cities and stuff that yeah. he kind of covers. And I was, I was excited to learn about that because I'm like, well, if that is my like plan B type of situation, then maybe I should go travel there. Where would I go? I've been fantasizing about reading on a beach somewhere. So maybe I go to Uruguay and read on a beach. Um, but really, I mean, cool to see the details of it. The other, you know, he goes into, he, go, he also goes into the downsides, but the, but some of the, some of the upsides were like tax benefits. The country is like geopolitically like neutral. Like no one has an ax to grind with them. Their uh, debt to GDP ratio is great relative to the rest of the world. Um, the downsides were that uh, there isn't like such a, a get up and go culture there in terms of like yeah, uh, if you're it, getting services and yeah, stuff. It's very slow. That, yeah. You also hear that in Mexico too, where it's just like, it's more here in America. It's just like immediate things happen fast. There's quick turnarounds. So yeah. I don't know what the, what the cause of that is exactly, but it, it's an, it's an interesting quirk, but it, yeah. in general, he's, He's very, you know, he, it sounds like he thought a lot about moving, moving there before he moved there and he shares all of his research with us and, you know, it might be, might be a great, a great place to have a plan B. Yeah. A top comment was from him. He said, if you're truly serious and sure about attaining residency or citizenship in Uruguay, do you Uruguay? I don't want know. to get, and get the ball rolling. Definitely reach out. And then he lists out a couple of places here. Um, short Simon says, great post. I would like to move there myself. What is the Bitcoiner scene like? He says, appreciate it. There was an intention behind this post. The scene is very small, but productive. A few projects focus mainly around education for the youth. Few, Very few merchants accepting, but the guys I've met are deep down the rabbit hole. Passionate Bitcoiners. A few self-mining, uh, acquiring hardware from Argentina. Many of them new to Noster and Stacker News. So I think there's plenty of potential to bootstrap and kick the Spanish-speaking community into action. Too many using crappy Telegram work to be done. And so come on down. You're welcome. Yeah. What do you think, Ian? When are you going to move? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess we'll see. But it sounds like a cool, a cool place to go. Definitely. How I'm close is it from, uh, from El Salvador? Uh, it's right below Brazil. It's between, it's, it's between Brazil there. and Argentina. And oh, there El Salvador here. is in Central America. So quite a ways away. Mexico's close. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Interesting stuff. 
the next top story is six OFAC sanctioned transactions missing. This is from 0XB10C, November 21st, Bitcoin post, 26 comments, 35,000. Sats, what is this, Keon? Uh, well, so 0XB10C, I wish, to have, I don't know if you're, maybe that's supposed to spell something that would be easier to say, but uh, <laughs> they, they do these really detailed uh, blog posts oh, yeah. that are really fantastic. And they run Mining Pool Observer, which looks to uh, find these types of things, these anomalies and block templates that mining pools are using to try and determine whether they are doing strange things with their, their block templates. And in this case, uh, he found six instances of transactions getting filtered from block templates of mining pools. In two of the cases, they were uh, filtered for uh, reasons that weren't like OFAC compliance. But in, and those were in, in via Bit BTC mining pool and Foundry, they both had these anomalous transactions that weren't actually OFAC compliant filtering. Uh, but four of them um, from F2 pool were, uh, do appear to be uh, filtered for OFAC compliance reasons. They're spending from an address that was listed in some kind of U.S. Treasury whatever report. And so they filter them out. Uh, I think there had been some follow-on news to this where I think F2 pool uh, had some response to this where they said they were going to continue or they were they were going to maybe stop doing this. I'm not exactly sure, but the, the blog post like kind of breaks down their analysis and what, how they're determining whether it actually is uh, sanctioned or yeah, filtering out sanctioned transactions or not, or sanctions address or not. And, you know, going through the reasoning of that. And it's, it's a very like in, in their typical style, very thorough and detailed. Yeah, it says right here, block 813231, and then it says mined by Foundry USA on October 21st, 2023, did not include the transaction and any sites of transaction. This transaction consolidates 150 inputs into one output when the input sends an output paid to, and then it gives a Bitcoin address. The address was added to the OFAX SDN list on April 14th, 2023. Wow. This was not a sanctioned filtering one. This is one that they, I believe they pushed this one. This In this particular case, it was because they likely didn't receive the transaction in time for the block to be mined or for it to get into a block to be mined. I think they, uh, the, like immediately after the transaction was broadcast and seen by a few other mempools, um, the block was mined. And then they later went on to mine the block with that uh, transaction in it. So they weren't uh, filtering it out. It just was like a coincidence of mempools. Yeah, so if you go, you follow the, the, the link. It says Office of Foreign Assets Control. Then it gives a specific, um, then it says here, specifically designated nationals list update. The following individuals have been added to the OFAX STN list. And then it gives all the organizations or companies, I should say. That's interesting. Yeah. Great research. Yeah, they do these great uh, deep dives like this. It's, it's a, they're a lot of fun to read because you know you're not, there's nothing that's missed. And so it's always nice. It's like you don't, you know, you don't have to do any more research than what's there. Yeah. If you then you'd be go back to see what the Sacker says. I uh, got at Bitcoin said, would advocating for miners to change their pool affiliation away from F2 pool be warranted? Question mark. No account says miners should want to move anyways because F2 pool is forfeiting some of their revenue on their behalf. At Bitcoin says many don't know any better without social pressure. Um, then no count comes back in and says maybe a dumb question, but why don't these sanctioned individuals just use a different address? And then Border Law says imagine Alice sends coins from address one to address two. Address one now has some corn on it. OFAX sanctions address address one. When Alice wants to send coins from one to two, Miners refuse to mine this transaction unless can choose other addresses to receive, but the origin of the coin will meet, will be the same. So how how would you how would you go around that then if you're um, if you're trying to send out from that address? Uh, you can't. I mean, you can just 
the the way Bitcoin works is you incentivize Bitcoin miners to uh, include your transaction on a block, so you can move it away from one of these sanctioned addresses, and then you don't run into this problem anymore. But in the meantime, the people who these addresses that are sanctioned still have Bitcoin on them that they are likely going to want to move off eventually. And the only it's Bitcoin censorship resistance that will you know the the incentives that create Bitcoin censorship resistance that will allow them to move their um, their Bitcoin off those addresses. Wow. Fascinating. Yeah. Man. Next top story is evaluating my Bitcoin privacy techniques against three surveillance attacks. This is from a super test net, November 20th, Bitcoin post, 15 comments, 33,000 sats. What is this Ethereum post, Keon? Yeah. Uh, well, there's a video uh, from, it looks like from someone at, at some Ethereum conference uh, that uh, Super Testnet watched, and they go th- they go over how both Coin Joins and uh, Monero don't pass the quote unquote sniff test of this guy who we see speaking in this video, uh, and uh, Super breaks down like their own like his own privacy. Uh, and tries to evaluate whether he's vulnerable to the three analyses that the that the speaker goes over. Um, one of them is like a taint tree and his coin join scenarios. Um, and he, in most of these situations, he deduces that he is not vulnerable to privacy leaks. I think in uh, one of them, the, specifically the last one he points out, he does find himself potentially vulnerable uh, in that he is, uh, I think, opening uh, lightning channels with, uh, with coins he's getting elsewhere and that that somehow might be, might be like linkable. So that's, those are kind of, you know, basically his privacy is pretty, is, is pretty great by the, by the, the analyses that the person is, uh, talking about and it's cool that he's like going you know going through this process at all but also sharing it yeah you guys wonder here i've I've identified my typical recipients as bit refill the bitcoin company phoenix and robosats users how am i protecting that info certainly not by publicly saying so stackernies do i use tor when selling coins on bit refill or the bitcoin company do i enable tor or phoenix wallet am i confident that their implementation of tor stops them from knowing my ip address answer no I think it only makes my channels or Tor channels. I think I still leak my IP address to them when, when my phone requests a Bitcoin exchange rate. Do I use a new identity every time on RoboSense? Do I take fiat in the an easy to trace account? I don't know, man. What do you do? Maybe just create an entirely new identity. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I got Siggy47 at the top comment. says, excellent analysis. I guess most of us have some work to do. BirdEye21 came in, said, second this. Glad you highlighted the Super Testament have to cover all bases. Um, and Super Testament says, yes, and a single essay can't cover all the bases. I recommend looking up how to tour, how tour works in particular if further information is desired. Yeah, interesting. Uh, how do you do your, um, do you ever do um, any of this kind of stuff? Try to hydrate it? I don't have any disposable income, so I'm not really buying... Uh, Bitcoin, and I'm not like uh, trying to, yeah, uh, high, high, like achieve privacy with Bitcoin. So I'm not, I'm not stacking Sats. I'm spending, spending Sats. I'm, I guess I'm spending Sats, or I don't have. I'm not, you know, most of it's fiat because it's mostly my living expenses. So. Yeah, that's what happens when you're just a poor, poor Bitcoiner. Poor, poor Bitcoiner. Just a poor Bitcoiner. Yeah. So, yeah. Next top story is WOS. To our valued Wallet Satoshi community in the United States of America, from Mr. L.S.H. 15 hours ago, Bitcoin, Bitcoin posts, 43 comments, 2,890 cents. Wallet Satoshi can. Yeah. I mean, this has been, this has been a big news item of the week uh, sometime yesterday on Thanksgiving in uh, the United States of America. Uh, Wallet Satoshi removed both of their applications or remove remove their application from both the Apple App Store and the Play Store on Google, citing, uh, 
more or less an unwillingness to comply with uh, the regulations that they would have to comply with to operate in the United States. And there, it says here, our commitment to providing a secure, user-friendly, and compliant platform globally. So it's, you know, I, you know if you, you read into that, they see themselves as non-compliant in the United States and therefore are pulling out and, and don't, you know, don't wish to become compliant. They say that you can, uh, if you still have, if, you've been, if you have the app downloaded, you can withdraw your money from it. Uh, I, presumably you still have access. I would guess they're probably not, never going to close, never going to s- prevent those users. They don't even identify them as American users probably and can't tell. So you'll probably still have access to Wallet of Satoshi, um, but you might, you probably won't get access to updates. Um, and, you know, if you replace your phone or whatever. So the recommended course of action is move to one of the many great non-custodial wallets uh, that are available on mobile uh, stores everywhere and don't have this issue. Uh, Should we just give up on Lightning and go back to on-chain? That's what we do. Uh, that's, uh, you've, you certainly seem to think so. <laughs> I, I don't think, I mean, I don't think so. I think, no. Uh, no. Doesn't this hurt? Doesn't this hurt the Lightning the, uh ecosystem though no i don't think so i think it it's a change i think people people just get really strange when their expectations are violated and i think that's all that's happening here and it'll just it's just the way life works i don't know do you think it's possible that they uh they're all rugging us right now no did, I, I don't know you don't no, think so they aren't they don't appear to be rugging anyone everyone no one i mean there's lots of chatter uh, like on on social media and stuff, but it appears to not be a rugging type of situation. It is rugging so. season. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Just More kidding. of a carpet guy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, we discussed some of this earlier. Like my initial, my yeah, initial, yeah, you had a good take. Tell us that. My initial theory was that the government pressured uh, Apple and Google to begin looking at the applications it was allowing on their app stores and see if they were like compliant finance, like in a financial regulation sense. I actually think that might not be what happened here. Uh, I, you know, given that wall of Associates seems to have done this voluntarily and doesn't indicate that it had any pressure. I think what might've happened is actually is, uh, is the Binance um, fine, which was, which was very large, which I think is one of your top stories. It was like four billion dollars. I think that scared them out of operating in the United States. That's my current working theory: is that yeah. they see the potential for them to be subject to a similar fine. Which for some for someone like Wallet of Satoshi, which is you know presumably a much smaller operation, you know, a large fine like that would put them out of business. Yeah, m- when I first saw this, to me, it just seemed inevitable. Like I think every everybody, and then and not only that, but I feel like for the past four or five months, there's just been more and more chatter around Wallace Satoshi, um, just in 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 the in the space and in the ecosystem. Everybody's just calling them out, basically, uh, for lack of a better word. And it definitely, this definitely feels like you know, um, you know, something came over their desk and it was like a like what. You know, I, I was telling, I was telling the guys earlier, like it just, it, to me, like the, it, it just doesn't see, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. Like it's uh, the polite way to say this. It, it's, it's not a gentleman's game anymore in, in the lightning space, basically is what I'm trying to say. And, and to me, when I saw this, it just seemed very um, on point with kind of how this was going to turn out anyway. I, I'm not shocked by it. I think the thing that would shock me if they actually did, I was joking about that rugged thing, but they did like 24 hours from now, you know, everybody got rugged on in America. They basically just didn't clear your stats or allow any withdrawals. I'd be shocked about that. That would be shocking. But to me, the seeing them pull their app from the app store and the Google play store in America, to me, that's not shocking that to me, that was always, that always seemed like that was going to come just by how, the amount of heat that they were getting. Uh, and, and the, the, the amount, I mean, cause we were talking about like a couple months ago and we were trying to figure out like, who was running it. And then I think you had mentioned who, who was a person, but no one really knew. Well, people know, but people just don't, people forget. They don't. Yeah. They, they like, they like to forget. Yeah. So that's kind of where my take was initially, but after hearing your take, I think your take makes more sense. Maybe it's just their, their, Me their too. fear, but they did definitely get the, 
the heat turned up on them, though. I mean, let's not make no mistake. There's everybody was was talking about them and their lack of transparency and all this sort of thing. So it's. Uh, oh, I don't remember people. I mean, people have. Have were people? Did the heat get? It yeah, like- dude. The past three, four months. I mean, we saw. We covered it a couple of times. I have to go back and find the episodes. But, I feel uh, like they've always had that level of heat, but they beca- I think the main thing that changed was they became, they're growing a crap ton with. Like, yeah, all, Rook's everyone's posting. No, everyone's <laughs> no, yeah, Rook's Kevin, posting. <laughs> Kevin is posting a lot on them, uh, on their growth I mean, numbers, I mean, which they have on the front of their website. You just yeah, I know. I'm just snapshots. kidding. But so. like, it, it, like, so I'm just saying that the amount of heat and the amount of, because uh, think about it, dude. Like, uh, how much money do you think they're making from this? Like, it's crazy. They have the large, they have like one of the highest scoring nodes on the lightning network and the capacity on it is like, oh, I don't know. I forget. That's it's, what I'm trying to say. It's no longer a gentleman's game. And, th- and that, that's, that's like hundreds. Of that's what I'm trying to allude like to is that um, it, it was like, it's, it's just, it's, it's out there. Yeah. It's just, it's a perfect target. Anyways. You got Tony Giorgio, top comment. He says, doesn't matter how little it is. If you're custody and user funds, especially in the United States without KYC, you're going to either shut down rug, rug, end up in jail, or be unpopular enough to not get noticed. And then Federa says, grateful you guys building web, non-custodial wallet. Um, Orthworm says, not surprising, but still disappointing. I know Juan Satoshi gets a lot of flack around these parts, but custodial service will always have a place in the mining ecosystem. They are fine for small amounts and the easiest way for newbies to receive funds without worrying so much about inbound liquidity. Um, yeah, man. Crazy. Crazy times. It is indeed. I know. We'll see. We'll see if it's rugging. 24 it's hours not. from now. We'll see. It's not. Hopefully not. I, I would still recommend withdrawal sats. Yes, definitely withdrawal your sats. Yeah. But they're not rugging you. The next, the final top story is stranded sats. <laughs> Elvis Mercury, November 22nd, Bitcoin post, 67 comments, 12.6 thousand sats. Keon, what is this from Elvis Mercury? Yeah, so that, while this sounds related in name, this is more so talking about uh, UTXOs that have uh, very little amounts of Bitcoin in them or very few sats in them to the point where there maybe aren't, uh, they aren't dust in the sense that you can't get them relayed, but the cost, like if transaction fees are very high, the cost of moving these UTXOs uh, is larger than the UTXO itself. And so they effectively become dust. And so that's kind of the, that's kind of what this is addressing. And it's saying like, well, you know, what, like, how do we solve for that? What, you know, is this, is this scenario actually likely? Um, Like what are, like, how do people think about, these potentially stranded sats that that one day maybe you can't move at all because the because the conditions have changed such that you're, they're like unspendable. Yeah, uh, you got Darth Core with the top comment. He says, "I'm not so worried about the future use of sats. Slowly in time, sats will be more valuable. And I mean, not in fiat price, but in purchasing power. That means in time with less sats, you could buy more things. Free market on steroids. Nowadays on Lightning, you have a F." ton of sats like 5,000 plus on public nodes and including also the private nodes that are not displayed in the public chart. So he just goes on and on about the, um, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's quite a few takes in here, but I mean, most of us recognize, I think that it is an issue to think about. I don't, you know, I think time, like I think space holler says right here, people lose sats through stranding effectively the supply over time shrinks. You say a fraction of a Bitcoin. I don't know. Let it play out. Let it play. Well, I think the I think the point is here is like if you play it out, it's, this is a, like what it's attempting to do is anticipate how it plays out, and there is no there is no magical future solve for this. It just this will either happen or we're going to build something that makes it so this doesn't happen. And and if you and the likely case is that this does happen. It's pretty. It's a pretty practical thing to assume. And uh, what should we be doing about it? Should we, you know, we can't. We can't really uh, expect realistically for there to be um, a hard fork in the future that that makes this uh, makes those UTXOs spendable. So what what should we do instead, or what should we plan to do instead? That's kind of yeah. Good post. Good post. 
That's all the top five stories of the week this week on Stacker News. Um, we're going to get into my top stories. Do we have any meta this week? Or no? I don't think so, no. Okay, cool. Uh, I just want to cover these because I think they're just too important not to cover, honestly. First one was the uh, the one that you mentioned earlier about the um, CZ agrees to step down, plead guilty. Um, so, yeah, this this happened this week on the 21st. Largest global crypto exchange will admit wrongdoing and agrees to pay $4.3 billion in fines. Jeez. Um, appeared in Seattle Federal Court Tuesday, entered his plea. According to court records, prosecutors accused Binance, which uh, Zhao owns, uh, facilitating transactions with sanctioned groups. Binance encouraged U.S. users to obscure their location so the firm could avoid complying with U.S. anti-money money laundering laws. Binance pleaded guilty and agreed to pay fines totaling $4.3 billion. Um, and then, and then CZ also agreed to pay a criminal fine of $50 million, although that amount might be reduced based on sep- sep- separate civil penalties. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of fiat. It is indeed. Uh, I haven't actually read this article, so I'm not too familiar with the details. I do know that he caught this massive fine, but it sounds like him not, it sounds like he was helping his users break the law. Is mostly what, or at least that's what the first part said at the beginning. And also, uh, yeah, not complying with U.S. sanctions while serving, I guess, U.S. a U.S. customer base. I actually don't know all the details. Yeah, he says here, uh, CZ knew he had a lot of U.S. customers writing in September 2019 chat that it was better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Ooh. <laughs> you hear that all the time, Dave for amassing so many American users despite laws that appeared to forbid doing so, according to prosecutors. Um, uh, Yeah, then this was interesting here, too. The outcome resembles an earlier case that prosecutors brought against the executives of BitMEX in exchange for trading crypto derivatives that was based in Sakeli's. Its former chief executive, Arthur Hayes, pleaded guilty to violating... AML laws and was later sentenced to two years of probation, avoiding a possible prison term. Yeah, man. I think uh makes the way for uh your BlackRock ETF. What do you think? Clear path. This might be what's going on here. They're trying to avoid yeah. uh criminals from getting rich or something. Your your whole your your boy Nick Carter, what did he call it earlier this year? He called it um he called it. He said it was the crypto shakedown or something. Yeah, um, I forget what he called it. He did a whole essay on it. He he was there. He was sounding the alarm back in May or April, whatever it was. I forget. Oh, um, Operation Choke Point. Yeah, two point I mean, all this stuff is coming out now. It's it's pretty obvious what's going on here. Um, the other top story I think was interesting was the what is Javier Millet's stance on Bitcoin? Kr posted this. Uh, he said, I, ha- I heard a number of people call Javier Millet pro-Bitcoin, but I haven't heard many details on what exactly what pro-Bitcoin means for him in Argentina. Does anyone have here have a good primary source material? And then they somebody posted this, um, this one here. I'm trying to hit play. Let's see if it plays. I can't hear it. Anyway, talks about Bitcoin here. Um, and he says how it's a central bank. Or he talks about Bitcoin and the reaction to the central bank scam that goes on in the world. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Kevin said it in this post, but it might have been before. But I think, um, yeah, Javier Mele got uh, elected, whatever prime minister, president, whatever Argentina has. And uh, before he was like one of the things he ran on was sh- shutting down the central bank in Argentina. And I don't know, there's been some like news following. I haven't been following this super closely because it's, you know, following politics alone is kind of weird. And then following politics in another country is also, but um, apparently this is really, this is really good and interesting because we basically have another yeah. uh, Bukele uh, yeah. in, in Latin America, more or less like a, you know, a, someone who is hip to, uh, fiat, really, is what is what it appears we we have in Javier or Millet. Yeah, that was a post last week. Was it the week before the last week where the sovereign individual and they were highlighting like all these things happening? Wasn't this one of the? I feel like this was one of them. Uh, might have been. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's, not, it's definitely consistent. It's flipping, it's flipping, it's flipping. 
Um, anyways, check it out. Great post. And then finally, this happened like I think 30 minutes after we we stopped the last SNL was Sam Altman's ouster of OpenAI. This kind of happened over the weekend. What did you? What is your take on it? I don't think I've talked to you about it. Um, oh yeah. Well, I mean, there's been so there were there were things that we all suspect that there was a bunch of uh, chatter about this when it first happened and a bunch of speculation as to why it happened. There's been you know many people. There was some news on Sam Altman's sister who accu- who like accused him oh, of yeah. uh, like sexual assault when they were young and other types of abuse. Some people thought that's what was going on. Other people thought it was like a coup of some kind where, uh, and then other people speculated that there was a security breach. Uh, and then more people speculated on a bunch of other stuff. Um, but it, you know, and then, and then more and more time went on. Uh, there was a, there was a huge, um, uh, you know, pushback from, uh, I don't know, the public in addition to OpenAI's current employee base, and they were all going to quit if Sam Altman continued to be fired. And then I guess what, and then they ended up, you know, Sam Altman took a job at Microsoft for a day. (laughs) Then he later went on to get rehired at OpenAI. And anyway, the, the way this... Oh, wait, he got rehired? I didn't hear about that part. He got rehired. And it's since come out that what actually triggered him getting fired was that OpenAI had, or... Chat, the, the chat GPT team had a significant breakthrough in AGI that it's co- with uh, an approach called QSTAR that allows um, or that showed uh, significant promise in, in AI uh, solving math problems, um, which, it, which it historically has been really poor at doing. Um, but they, yeah. so, so it was a, it was seen as like, you know, this is a, this is this, it was, it was seen as a significant step to AGI that Sam Altman did not disclose to the board of open AI, which over, which is, which is there to oversee the development of AGI and prevent it from getting unleashed, you know, unceremoniously or accidentally or, you know, haphazardly. And so they, that's why they fired Sam Altman because they thought he was obscuring this. Yeah, uh, and, and if you if you uh, you should check out this post. It's on Stratechery. Um, dude, Ben just like kills it there. Anyway, he goes through all of basically what Keon's talking about a little bit more in depth. Um, and then, uh, but I didn't know that he got hired back mm-hmm. too. It was interesting. But did you see how they're structured though? Did you see this? Yep. So this is the really fascinating thing is that they're structured as far as like a nonprofit, yep. and Microsoft owns a minority stake. You have employees and investors, you know, um, receive an equity from this uh, holding company. Um, but they also own OpenAI GPLLC. It's, there's a lot going on there. It just looks very, uh, very interesting. Um, and so maybe they thought that he was not being transparent to the board of directors above, I guess, the people above. Yeah, that's the only board that they have as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, really fascinating. Um, so what happened? So what happened when, because Satya, he hired them on Sunday night, right? He announced this tweet. Yep. And then what happened after that? He pulled, but he pulled, well, then they, then what ended up happening was the board all resigned from open AI. They like, uh, they succumbed to the, to the, the blowback of the decision that a new board was installed and they rehired. Uh, Sam Altman and Satya is like completely cool with that because that's, you know, mostly what he wanted to begin with. He was just giving Sam an alternative path. And so Sam is back at open AI, uh, bringing about the uh, AI doomsday that the, <laughs> that the open AI board was set up to prevent. Uh, yeah. What if this is all about the orb? I'm <laughs> just kidding. The orb. Oh, the orb. I see. He's like, you won't let me do the orb, then I'm out of here. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I, feel, I feel like that whole opening, I think, is kind of a wait and see for me personally. There's just something there. Something more there. 
Hmm. Yeah. People, uh, people were saying, I know there, uh, there's Alec, Alex Leishman got a lot of, uh, retweeting because he had called open AI sus for a while. I mean, its structure is definitely weird. It's founder who is working like a dog has no equity in it. It's like, it's a very odd, it's a very sus looking situation. I don't know what, like what more could be sus than weird misaligned incentives though. And also Sam Altman's like reckless ambition, but yeah, that's basically what it shows, right? The, the, the ambition that he has to, to move all this uh, direction that he wants. It's more about, um, yeah, that's the scary part. It's like, well, but what direction is that? Um, cool. And then the final story I have, I feel like we covered a lot. Uh, this one is this one. I don't know if you saw this Bitcoin Black Friday. There's a lot of great deals here. The stackers at home. You got SaaS to spend. Now's the time to do it. Is this all CoinKite project? Products? No, they, they put together this, this website and they allow anybody to go in there and post stuff. So you can see like some of the stuff from Cold Card, Tap Signer. Club Lab has some stuff in there too. Lightning Store. You can go get 50% off on Lightning Store. Uh, what are you selling? Uh, we, we have, we have our drop in pass here at 50% off. And then we have our t-shirt that scores be made at 21% off. Cool. If you ever wanted a plop up t-shirt, now's the time to do it. Um, and there's even Jimmy has his book here too. Yeah. You get 20% discount on it. A lot of cool stuff. I think more stuff is being added. Um, so anyways, check it out. Stackers. A lot of cool deals. Bitcoinblackfriday.org. Um, Yeah. All right. With that, let's get into the top snackers of the week. Keon, David W. Yeah. For the your wife, uh, Siggy, always at the top. Elvis, undisciplined. Wow. I'm like not even in the top 10. Yeah. Xeus, Onions, Darth Coin, Nerd to Ninja. KR fallen. Wow. KR, yeah. He's on the list now. Look at that. Uh, we got Super. Uh, zero X yeah. pie cover. We should, we should uh, do one of these for zero X. That, that was a great post. Yeah, don't have green screen today. Um, yeah. R sync. Yeah, cool. Let's get in. Coming. You want to, so we want to, do you want to visit the saloon right now or should we do it after the Cowboys? Well, yeah, it's your, it's your, it's your show car here. Yeah, I'm just here. <laughs> I'm changing. Oh, all of a sudden it's I'm my cha- show. I'm changing to this desk. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, all right, let's get into the most boring segment in Bitcoin, baby. This is the most boring segment in the entire world. It's called Top Cowboys. And it's it's all because Keon just wants to prove that cowboys are cool. They are cool. That's why we're in Texas. You're wearing cow. You wear like cowboy boots out of necessity. You never know for your cat for when your snakes come out in the in the range. You never know. You know. I ran a motorcycle because I, I, I could burn my, I could burn my, I could burn my, my pipe. It's all those things. I see. Uh, protection. anyway, it's for protection. Keon. You should protect your hat, your head with a hat as well. Uh, but I understand it's not easy and not easy to earn a cowboy hat. Um, yeah, it looks like the top, the top five or so pretty consistent here. looks like Ben might've inched up a little bit. Yeah, tell we'll see. Dark horse. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but uh, yeah, looks like it ha- we haven't changed that top ranking too much. Uh, some people were expecting people to drop out. Oh, look, Kevin's three holiday. days away from 300. Dude, we'll be at a year pretty soon. Cowboys. <sighs> three days away from 300. This is interesting. Jerry Garcia. I've never seen this guy before. You would even David W. Jerry Garcia claims to be the real Jerry Gar- Garcia, his ghost. Oh, the Ben and Jerry's Garcia? Yeah, of the Grateful Dead. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Um, and then we're going to jump into the saloon. Stackers said next time, jump into the saloon. They want to say hi. Um, Nemo says, tip of the day, O and SNL, be more of a carpet guy. It's just say no to rugs, rug pulls. Wow. Right, guys. Wow, quoting you now. Yeah. Uh, yes, we'll be waiting for you. Whoa. There you go, Keon. Oh, She's waiting for you. Future wife car. And then we got, um, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, give it a day, guys. Give it a day. Oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> what is <laughs> to that? Them, to themselves. They did it to themselves. 
Oh, man, stackers are funny today, man. Um, cool. Yeah, it's not a very lively. Uh, it's, it's holidays. Yeah. What is? <laughs> oh, what is going? On? <laughs> oh my god! I like how. Karma I like how Phoenix is running away from everything. Oh no, they're all moving away. <laughs> no, they're all watching. No, no. Look, if it looks like Phoenix is moving, is no, driving I think it's away. Point, like the, it's coming in. Yeah. Oh, I think it's pointed towards north, it. I don't think the, any of these are coming in. I think. Is it, what is it called? The North Star, or the North Board, Starboard, Starboard. Right. Pointed this S- way. Starboard. Starboard. I don't know what I don't know anything about ships. Do you? I, I saw Titanic. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> and they're like, point to starboard. Uh, yeah, great stuff, man. Really great stuff. Anyways, we said hi. Yeehaw. We said hi. Cool, Keon. What are you? Uh, what are you doing this weekend? What am I doing? Is there anything that's going on? I don't think there's a whole lot. I think uh, I was supposed to watch a friend's cat while they were out of town, but they are. In- no longer going to leave. The oh, day when wow. I went to go f- feed their cat earlier, the cat like hide, so I couldn't find their cat, but I fed it. That was that. Uh, that was what I did. I don't think I'm doing anything else. I don't think I have really any plans other than normal, normal weekend stuff. How about you? Uh, I think I, mean, I had the whole week off. I don't know if you noticed, but I was gone for the whole week. Yeah, I don't. It was I, great. Your boss is very generous with time off. It was great, dude. It was. Um, I just. I don't think I've had more than three days off in a row since 2021. <laughs> like to be completely honest. And this that was, the f- yeah. Cause I, I always used to have vacation when I used to have, yeah, I always have vacation four weeks a year and stuff. And this is the first week where I took like one, two, three, four, five. I took like six, seven days off. Six, Came back seven today days. Something like that. Came back today. How many so, days have you taken off Jim? In the la- from the last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just needed. It's Bit- good. Bitcoin need- takes no days off. Um, we got a comment from uh, Fountain Zap. Uh, if we can get an AI John Lennon to record a new Beatles song, we can have an AI car and Keon to record a new episode of Stacker News Live. Oh, that'd be great. What do you think of that, Keon? Well, I know. That's yeah. from Bake. I don't know. Car want- the car's looking for an exit plan here or something i don't know <laughs> just kidding all right sackers y'all have a great weekend keon zap